Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're covering the October bottling from Somerton Club. Now, in case you're not aware, I'm sure you are if you're watching this, but in case you're not aware, Somerton Club uh, are a UK based subscription service that sends you one bottle every two months for £50. That's delivery included. Now, you don't know what's coming. The box turns up like around sort of the 24th or something like that of, of the second month, and you get what you get. And one of the cool things that I like about the club, as I've said many times when I'm covering their bottles, is that um, I love that I don't know what's coming, and even if I asked the owner what was coming, he still wouldn't tell me. But um, I, I never know what's coming, and every single time I open up the the the, bo the box, the bottle, whatever, you kind of like, like I do a quick rendition of my reaction, and it'll be something like this. I'll open it up, and I'll go, hmm, interesting. Like, almost never, would it be something that I would pick up off the shelf myself? Uh, but it's every single time I try it. In fact, I can count on, on literally one finger uh, from a bottle that I don't like. But everybody else that I know likes it. So it's just me. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is I really enjoy the club. Paid member of the club. Love the club. Uh, if you want to check them out, there's a link in the description below, of course. On to then this month's bottle. And here we have something... A little bit interesting this is their first bourbon first American whiskey and we have the Americana and then this is their small batch bourbon whiskey now that's interesting because like I said it's uh, Somerton's first kind of American style kind of whiskey Amer first bourbon uh, they do a lot of interesting things they they don't always go for scotch which I like that's a big big thing for me so very interested to see what people think of this one because I'm a big fan of bourbon so well I mean you can tell spoiler alert like I mean I've had it only a few days and that's just <laughs> it's just going down a little bit too easy and we'll get into exactly what it is just now so Americana then they're a new UK based company and they're bottling I guess what they're going to be doing is interesting whiskies from the Americas under the Americana label we have the small batch bourbon whiskey they're going to be releasing a, a single barrel wheated bourbon and a single barrel rye of uh, you know different proportions whatever um, they're at the moment going to only be available through the Somerton Club uh, which I'm not sure if you need to be a member or not to buy them. So um, anyway, there'll be a link in the description below so you can go and check them out when they're released on there. So if you are interested in this, then you can go and find out a bit more about them. Loads of information on the front here that tell you a little bit more about it. This is a six-year-old bourbon, and we'll get into origin a little bit later on. Um, there's uh, 1,227 bottles of this around. We've got a bottling date and a distilling date, which I won't read into. Six years is all the important bit. Non-chill filtered, natural coloured. Yes, yes, yes. 48.4%, you know, these are all things that I'd associate with good bourbons. And we've got a mash bill here as well, which is cool. It's 75% um, corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. Now, before I get into the actual tasting, it's worth noting, um, they were very transparent about the origins of this. This is an MGP created whiskey. Uh, and I know that has, um, like, there's a couple of camps of people with MGP. You either know what it is and don't care, you even know what it is and you've, you've got a bit of an opinion about it or you have no idea who MGP are. Uh, MGP are a, a massive distillery in Indiana that basically you can, any like almost anybody can turn up and create their own whiskey. There are many, many major brands out there that, um, that have their stuff made by MGP and they release it under their own label. It's pretty normal practice over there. Um, in the in the US especially, you can just go with a group of friends and just do a barrel pick and you label it up. Loads of stores do it, loads of websites do it whatever so uh, i'm glad that they were transparent about it but for me it didn't take much digging to f find out it was mgp anyway but um yeah it's really good of them to to sort of tell people on the somerton letter where this was made um i don't think this is an issue whatsoever there are going to be some people that um aren't a big fan of that because like i said earlier anyone can go to mgp and make pretty much this i guess um it won't be cheap <laughs> it won't be this cheap you know i paid 50 pounds for this bottle um with through the summerton club so that's the, the saving grace of that but um yeah basically anyone can do it now um i should also caveat this as well that um this really is kind of aimed towards my uk audience because if you're in the us stuff like this is 10 a penny you know you can go into any any uh, liquor store and find 
any kind of bourbons with this mash bill and get something fairly similar, right? Um, over in the UK, over here, we're not that up on bourbon. You know, there's obviously a contingent of bourbon fans over here and there are places you can get them, but all of the major releases are allocation based and we just don't get that over here. We get obviously the, the, the bog standard supermarket ones, you know, um, we, we can get bourbon, but to get good quality bourbon it takes a bit of effort over here and a lot of money. So when I'm talking about prices after the tasting, you'll have to bear that in mind if you're US because you're going to get stuff like this a lot cheaper than what I can. Anyway, let's go and look at the glass and see what we've got and have a little go on the tasting. Now, because it's a bourbon, I'm not going to go into the rules and regs and whatever, but you know, basically you're not allowed to add colour. So we can talk about the colour. Lovely golden, beautiful deep brown colour on that. Uh, let's get into the nose and see what we've got. Okay, standard stuff out of the way first. Vanillas, caramels, honeys, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's all here. Check, check, check. The interesting stuff that comes through this is a big bag of extra kind of brown sugar. And for me, there's almost like a cherry note on the back end of it. Yeah, really nice. I think that's the, I guess you, I mean, you'd call it a sort of a higher rye, I guess. This is not like high rye, not high, high, high rye, but this is a, a, a more corn and rye mixture. So we're getting a little bit of those rye notes coming through. Let's get onto the palate. Mm. Oh, yes. So for me, ignoring all the standard notes, it's very much cherry up front for me. Then you kind of, it evens out into this kind of rye bread, kind of, um, you know, that, you know, when you eat one of those rye crackers, you're obviously you're getting that kind of ryeness from there. Finally, a wee bit of menthol for me on the back end that sticks around throughout the finish. The finish is kind of long, spicy, cinnamon, but there's a kind of menthol note, a, a, ch a chilling, like sometimes I talk about warming and things like that. But it's almost like um, a chilling effect happening, you know, when you have like a menthol sweet or something like that. One more sip. Mm. Yeah, really tasty, really tasty. You can see, again, I've not been shy on this. I'll have to make a decision about whether I just get this killed or if I save it because, let's face it, like I said earlier, you know, it, this is, for my US guys, this is gonna be 10 a penny. For my UK guys, you're probably not gonna be that much into bourbon. So, um, especially like local friends of mine, it's probably not worth saving for them because they're probably not going to be that interested. So my choice is probably going to be just to enjoy this one while it's here and just go nuts on it and, and it'll probably be gone pretty quickly. But as always then, let's talk about value. So obviously I got this for 50 quid. Summerton does every two months 50 pounds. Now um, the RRP on this is going to be, we don't know for sure, but it's going to be somewhere around that sort of 70 to 75 pounds mark, which is hefty. That's a hefty price tag. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that if I'd have seen this on a shelf without any knowledge of it whatsoever, without knowing Summerton Club, without knowing Americana, I would 100% have passed it by at that price, 100%. Probably maybe even at 50, but that's not a symptom of the quality of this or even the branding or anything like that. It's just that I have to be really careful about what I spend my money on, same as you guys do. But that's why I'm glad that I've got this as part of the Summerton Club and there's you know a thousand odd people that are going to have this um, as well, so hopefully all of them have now got a bit of an intro into this brand because I'm certainly now interested in their wheated bourbon. Not that inter interested in the rye, you know me, I'm not really a big fan of rye these days, but I would try it for sure. Um, wouldn't plump for a full bottle of it. The other two that are going to be releasing a bit higher in ABV as well, which is something that I really enjoy. So yeah, uh, I'll drop a link to the Americana Whiskey uh, in the description below. So if you're interested in checking out the brand, you can go and check them out and uh, see what they're all about and see what they're going to be doing. I think the plans in place is to uh, source a little bit, MGP, fine, but then they've got the whole of the US to go to. So if they can find some distilleries that will bottle some stuff for them, I think that's going to be a good business model. In any case, a bit of a winner for me. Uh, I'm enjoying this, going to kill it for sure. Got a good value for the 50 quid. Uh, I think it is good value for the for UK uh, for the higher price as well. I wouldn't be disappointed if I'd have bought it at that price. Obviously, I would go to the US and see the other prices and be a bit of a bit of a shame, but that's what we have to pay over here. And I'm sure you guys have to pay similar sort of inflation prices for scotch over in America as well. But there you go. Like I said, a winner from me, and I look forward to finishing this bottle off. See you again.